MK3475 is an inhibitor of PD-1. And what ends up happening with this class of drugs, whether it's a PD-1 inhibitor or a PD-L1 inhibitor, is that it is blocking the interaction between PD-1 and PD-L1. Um, that interaction basically inhibits T-cell activation. Uh, T-cells are a component of the immune system, and so uh, to, to sort of overly simplify it, you are inhibiting an inhibitor of an immune response, and therefore you are presumably stimulating an immune response. Uh, this is a field that we've been very involved with, but nonetheless, I, I think that it is one that we still poorly understand, and, and in many respects, I think sometimes we get ahead of ourselves in being pushed to explain what we see when, when in reality there's a lot of learning we have left as a field to do about this. Um, what we have seen, which has been extraordinarily exciting and has generated a lot of the enthusiasm, um, have been responses and responses that so far have last for, lasted for quite a period of time. So uh, with MK345 specifically, there is extraordinarily little that is published uh, to date. There are no publications about the effectiveness in lung cancer. And um, there really are, is largely one data set that's been presented at uh, the World Lung Conference in Sydney, um, updated slightly at uh, a, a meeting in San Diego uh, this past January. Uh, what was shown as part of that was that the response rate was in the 20 to 25 percent range. The, uh, there are some nuances about how one measures response, and so based on how you measure it, the, it, it can be a little bit different. Um, the response rate, though, of 20 to 25 percent, although not as great as we would like, uh, certainly was better than what would be anticipated in the group of patients we were looking at, which was patients who had had uh, two prior lines of therapy. And uh, I think that for many people, what has been more interesting than even the percentage of people who have responded is the duration of response. So uh, the most updated data that has been presented on the duration of response uh, shows that of those people who had a clinical response, who had significant shrinking of the tumor, um, we don't know how long the middle person stayed on drug um, because the, the last time it was updated, uh, the follow-up was 62 weeks and um, more than half the people were, had remained on drug. And that has certainly been an exciting finding. We typically, um, with our standard th chemotherapies at least, have had great difficulty keeping people uh, in, on a drug for that period of time with their disease not getting worse. Um, and so I think it has led to a great deal of enthusiasm. You, you also asked about the PDL1 one uh, expression. So this has been an area of a, a great deal of research. So as part of the MK3475 trial, all patients needed to undergo a fresh biopsy. And so that biopsy has been evaluated for the level of PDL1, with the idea being that the level of PDL1 will predict whether or not an inhibitor of PDL, PD1 or PDL1 um, would would be beneficial. Now, there are data sets that vary quite a bit uh, based on agent, based on method of testing, and I think that this is an area that is uh, certainly being evaluated. There have been a great number of people already accrued to the phase one study, um, and the phase two, three study is ongoing. The enrollment for the phase two, three study is that patients will have to have uh, MK34, will have to have PDL1 uh, expression that is positive. Now, there are many questions about this. Is do you have to be really positive, or does a little positive matter, or are there people who are negative who are doing who are doing well? And um, there certainly are reports with other compounds in the field of patients who do not express PDL1 who who do well. And so I think that this is still very much an open field and, and, and a set of open questions.